Hello all and welcome to Wild Crochet Designs. My name is Mary and in today's tutorial we are working on this gorgeous square coaster. Very nice. Now I'm not going to spin it around anymore and make you dizzy um, but the the colour combination chosen for our beautiful coaster today was chosen by one of our subscribers on one of our lives. In actual fact we have two lives one at Wednesday 4 p.m. Melbourne Australia time and one at 10 a.m. Melbourne Australia time on a Saturday mornings. Now every Saturday mornings live you will have an opportunity as a subscriber to choose the colours of our very next project. Get excited so what i actually do and the reason why i call it live antics is because it's a whole lot of fun and we you know we're really silly but that's okay i put a whole lot of yarn on the table and i say right choose two colors choose four colors choose five choose one whatever colors you want out of what's on the table and the lovely lynn m chose these one two three and four beautiful colors for this project now i didn't know how i was going to make them work and Lynn didn't know the pattern that was coming out and what we were making. All she knew was they were her colours. So thank you very much, Lynn, for your colour choice today. Let's talk about the yarn right now. Let's talk about Spot Saver yarn. Uh, Spot Saver USA style. It is acrylic. Now you can use a cotton. You can use wool. Whatever you like. It is a coaster after all. So I do think that a cotton would probably suit more but you know just for fun let's try this now it calls for a five millimeter hook and we are using the five millimeter hook I'm using the clover hook today you will need your scissors you will need a sewing dining weaving needle definitely will need that because you will have quite a few ends at the back to weave in you'll need four green stitch markers blue white doesn't matter all the same color though and one different color now we need those four to help you find some corners when we're doing our final round, all right? Uh, the pink one we're using just for the beginning for our slip stitch, stitching into our piece, yeah? So don't worry too much about that yet, and we'll talk about that throughout the tutorial. Now the amount of yarn you will need, very, very minimal. Two, three grams per row, maybe four grams for this one, maybe five, six for this one, very minimal, great stash busting project and it looks gorgeous as well. And you know what? It's not just a coaster, but it's a square one. If you wanted to try some round ones, here are a couple of my round ones. Now these ones here are paid patterns on my website at www.wowcrochetdesigns.com. This one here is a very easy, easy, basic beginner's crochet poster. And this one right here is still easy, but not completely beginner's, all right? And you have an opportunity to purchase uh, the pattern, or you can purchase the pack itself and get the yarn, the hook, the scissors, and the sewing needle for either one of those coasters on my website. There you go. So there you go, guys. But before I go on, I think I mentioned it in the tutorial as well, but I can't remember if I do, so I'm going to say it again. These, let's do this, get a nice close up for you. These two rounds here, right here, the blue and the first round of the white. If you were to use both those rounds over and over and over and over again, you could form a beautiful blanket as well. Or you could turn it into something like a, you know, put a few squares together and make a scarf. Or you can do whatever you want with your squares as well. But um, if you wanted to, uh, do that don't do the last two rounds yeah just continue making your squares but for us today we are making the beautiful square coaster all right so I'm not going to talk anymore I just want to thank Lynn once again for her color combination for the coaster we're just going to get started making this gorgeous square coaster good luck all all right guys we're going to start off by making a magic circle magic ring magic loop yes just grabbing your tail end of your yarn popping it in front Grab the working end, wrap it around your fingers like so, and it's forming a little X, if you will. Yeah. Then you grab your hook, you pop it under the first loop of the X, and you pull that back loop up and through. Now you have that, that, and then these two yarns here. Pop your fingers just between, like that, grabbing everything like so, and then you can let go. Now transfer into your other hand, like so. Yarn over your hook 
and pull it through to the loop on your hook. That is your first chain. Yarn over, second, yarn over, third. Now you're going to do a double crochet in the center of your little loop that we formed. Yarn over your hook, pop it over the two threads that you're working over now, pull a loop through, you now have one, two, three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through the last two. We're going to do yet again another one. Yarn over your hook, in through to the circle. Pull a loop through. Three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through the last two. And now what you've got is that little circle there. What you're going to do is just give that a gentle tug, not a lot, we need to work in that space, yeah? And also what I want you to do is grab your stitch marker. All right, now what you have here, these are the posts of our work. It's a little bit of a tip trivia here. These little things are called the posts and these little gaps in between these two threads, that's the stitch and these two threads is the front loop and the back loop of your stitch. I thought I'd just do a little bit of trivia while we were here. So that's your one stitch, that's your second stitch, and here were the chains we worked on in the beginning, all right? So you grab your stitch marker, and in that top loop there, or the front loop of that chain, and the back loop of that chain, you're popping your stitch marker in there. You should have one thread on the bottom and two threads on the top, all right? That is called a stitch in um, crochet, stitch, stitch, and stitch, all right? Just a little bit of trivia just for fun. All right, from here, we're going to chain two. One and two, that's forming your first corner. Now you're going to do three double crochets in that center again, just like we did here, yeah? So into the center with one, yarn over your hook, a second one, Yarn over your hook, third. And then you have your corner again. So you're going to do two chains, one and two. And once again, into the little loop. And I'm crocheting over the tail, otherwise your little magic's not gonna work at the end. One, two, three forming your very last corners. So you've got one set, two sets, three sets, chain one and two. It's actually a second last corner if you think about it, but it's your last cluster of three double crochets. So in you go with your three double crochets, one, two, and three. And right here, you're going to form that last corner by going chain one and two. So what you have is that. Well, it's definitely not a square, yeah? It will be in a moment. This is where the magic happens. You grab your little loop and you give it a tug and it closes up the center. And you'll kind of get that look. And if it didn't work, just give it a gentle tug once you're in and your little space in there is gone. And now you can see your corners, yeah? Except this last one, which we are going to slip stitch into the stitch with our stitch marker in it. Now, hopefully you haven't split yours. I'm hoping I haven't split mine. No, good. So pop your hook into the stitch with your stitch marker if it helps to take that out now, otherwise it's hard to work with, yeah? Pull a loop through, like so, and then pull it through to the loop that's on your hook you closed up your square. So pull a loop through, yes? Give me a little thread a cut, pull it, and just make sure you pull it in real tight like that all right and that's the first part of your square now we're going to change colors to l nearly knocked the frame off there lilac and here we go so what i like to do when i'm changing colors is literally go to the opposite corner here so go right over to the opposite corner grabbing the hook popping it into your corner and just grab the thread Pop it over your hook, like so. Up and down, up and down. Pull the loop through. Now, to lock that into place, because that's not knotted, just grab your uh, tail end and, whoops, and passing it forward like that. 
chain one, two, and three. Now, before you go on, it was difficult to do this before with our stitch marker, but now we can, right? Pop your stitch marker in the first loop and the second loop of your chain, if you can. And I just went right through it, <laughs> right behind it. Hello. Okay, there you go. I think I've split that stitch, but I'll fix that later, so don't worry about it, okay? Now what we're going to do here is we're not putting two double crochets and then chain two and then three. We're only putting one double crochet in there, like so, in the corner, like normal. And now we're chaining two, one and two. And then we're only putting another two double crochets, not three, just two, all in the same corner, crocheting over that tail, okay? Like so. Just grab your tail and pop it at the back. Right, now here's where it's a little bit different, yeah? We're going to chain one. We're going to skip, that's our first double crochet, that's our second, and that's our third. We're going to skip the first one, jump into the second one with a double crochet. Chain one, skip that double crochet, hop into the corner with your normal corner set, but it's going to be two double crochets in the corner. That's all. Chain one and two, and, oh, this is too close now, sorry guys. Going out of frame there, two double crochets. One and two. Chain one. All right, once again, we are skipping that first stitch, jumping into the second one with a double crochet. Yes, chain one. We're skipping the last one and we're going into that corner. But before we do, now here's a little tip that I like to do. It's not necessary for you to do it. I actually grab my blue tail and pop it in my fingers at the back of my hand like so. And I crochet over that blue tail. So we're going to jump into the corner and do our normal corner space of two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets. And I'm going to crochet over the tail. Not necessary if you don't want to do it, but there you go. That's one double crochet. Once I've gone over it, I don't have to hold the tail anymore. I just continue crocheting over it with our second double crochet. Chain one and, whoops, whoops, don't lose a stitch, two. <laughs> Come on, Mary, you can do this. Uh, and we're going to do two double crochets in the same corner. One and uh, two. So not only have you hidden the tail, but you've hidden the knot as well. Chain one. Once again, you're skipping the first stitch, jumping into your second stitch right there. Oops, chain one. Skip that first stitch into the corner with your two, two, two. Two double crochets. Chain one and two. Two double crochets. Now we have one side left here before we join. Oops, oops. Before <laughs> we join our work. Hello. Chain one. <laughs> She's all over the place today. Skip the first, jump into your second. Chain one. Now, normally you would do your uh, corner here, but it's already done. So all we're going to do is close up. I knew I split that stitch. I'm going to take mine out. Close up your work by slip stitching into the stitch with your stitch marker. Hopefully yours wasn't as split as mine. So you're grabbing that top loop if you end up taking yours out and the second loop. So you're grabbing two loops here yeah? and pull a loop through like so, like so. And what you have is your square right there. All right. Guess what? Pull up a loop. You are cutting this color as well. And we are going on to the baby blue, the baby blue. All right. Whoops. <laughs> I put the wrong thing out the way. I'm just going to move these because they're really annoying me. And I'm going to grab our baby blue. Now for this part here, I'm going to pop my baby blue here to show you what to do with this tail 
and we're going to work halfway and then you're going to do the rest yourself what they're saying what like before we pop our hook in the corner stitch any corner stitch you like grabbing your little uh, baby blue pop it over your hook pull it through just grabbing your tail and passing it forward like so and once again you are chaining one two and three guess what pop your stitch marker in Every time I pick the stitch marker up, I drop it. It's like butterfingers here today. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. All right, so now we are doing two double crochets in there again. I'm sorry, let's try one. <laughs> one double crochet in there again. Oh, she will wake up any time now. And we are chaining two. One and two. And now we're putting two double crochets over the tail. Remember, we are crocheting over that tail. Now, if you didn't crochet over the tail, don't stress. You can weave that in later as well. All right. All right. So we are here. Just grab the tail at the back now. Now, here's where this round can get a little tricky if you miss a stitch. And it's easy to jump into there and do your first double crochet. But you have a stitch in there. Just pop your little blue over and you can actually see that first stitch there so you're going to put a double crochet in that first stitch right there that's one you're putting a double crochet in the second stitch next to it two you're putting a double crochet in that space now it's over the chains yeah so you're just going three that's your third double crochet you're putting your fourth one in that stitch right there. Your fifth one is going in that space. But I'm going to grab that tail again and crochet over it. Again, not necessary, but it does help later. All right. So I'm crocheting over the tail like so. And what do we say? <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. Yes. Now your fifth one, I'm sorry, let's try six, <laughs> she can't count either today, goes in the tight stitch that you've got your um, thread hanging out of. So you pop, oh nice tight stitch, your hook in there and you do a sixth double crochet. <laughs> How many was that? <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, come on Mary, there's one more stitch left, seventh. So you've got your seven stitches across. Oh, I don't know, guys. I don't know. All right. In your corner space, you're going to hop in there and you're going to put your two, two, two. Two double crochets. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Chain two. One and two. And two double crochets all in the corner. Two legs off. Yeah. And once again, you are doing your seven across. So that notice how I pushed my... Um, set over so I can find that first stitch which is one and two all in the stitches and now you come to a space you do a third one in the space and you've got your stitch here there's your fourth and then you've got your space that's your fifth and then you've got your next stitch that's your sixth and your last stitch in the set is your seventh. I was going to send you off on your own, but you know what? We have, we've only got a little bit left to do, so we may as well do it together. Do your corner of two double crochets. One and two. Chain one and two. And two double crochets. Like so. Once again, we're doing our seven across. Move it over. And there's your first one and your second and around your chain third in your stitch fourth in your space fifth in your next stitch sixth in your last stitch in the set seventh I should say side, not a set. It's not exactly a set, is it? And then you're going to put two double crochets, two chains and two double crochets all in the same space. Super duper easy. One and two and two double crochets. Okay. Guess what? We have a last set to do. 
one into the first, or one into your second. I call it a set again, it's a side. One into the third, <laughs> one into your fourth, one over the space there, and one into that. Whoops, whoops, get that, do that again. Hello, <laughs> second last one. And one into your last one right there. And guess what? You're up to the part where you are slip stitching to join. All right. You don't have to do anything else. You just have to find your little spot. Pop your hook in. Oh, you know what? I've split that stitch again. I, I do so well with splitting stitches, don't I, guys? All right. So we're going to pop it through that first loop and that second loop. Let's try the second loop. And then we're going to just... Pull the loop through, pull it through to the loop on your hook, pull up a loop. Yes, we are cutting once again. Beauty is pain, guy. Beauty is pain. Okay, so that's that. And now we are going to start with the white. Oh, if I can find the tail end, hello. Okay, all right. It took me a while to find that white, but I found it. All right, so once again, what are we going to do? This time we're going to start where there are no tails. I just started close so that you can see how to uh, crochet over that tail so where is there a no tail right here no tail so pop your hook here you know why I do that it just helps with weaving in so you're not weaving in all in one spot that's all all right so pop your hook in that center space grabbing your little white we'll talk about ends very soon pull a loop through and just grabbing your little tail end passing it forward like so chaining one two and three grabbing that stitch marker and popping it in there like so there we go all right once again double crochet in that space chain one and two and two double crochets all in the same space over your tail if you want to Otherwise, pop that tail at the back regardless. All right. Now, here what we're going to do is exactly the same as this section here. There's going to be chain spaces. All right. So you are chaining one. And remember to pull your work over so you can see that first stitch. That's one. And you're jumping into the second stitch right there. So skip one, jump into that second with a double crochet. Chain or one. Skip one. Go into the next with a double crochet. That's your second double crochet. Chain one, skip, third double crochet. Chain one, skip, fourth double crochet. Chain one, skip, fifth double crochet. Chain one, skip, corner. Do your corner. One, and two, chain one and two, and complete that corner. And two. Having a look at what you have. Yeah, so it's exactly the same as this one, but there's so many more stitches now. All right, so what you have is your one, two, three, four, five double crochets, and in between you have one, two, three, four, five, six chains all right five double crochets six chains per side and then you do your normal corner so we're going to do another one together which is good because we have our little um thread there we probably won't do anything with that one and i'll explain in a minute but in the meantime you're going to chain one move your work over so you can see that first stitch jump into your second with a double crochet that's your first one chain one Skip one, second one, chain one, skip one, third, chain one, skip one, fourth, chain one, skip one, fifth. All right, so your fifth, you can, you know what, someone did say to me once, why do you pop the stitch in the tighter section when you can just pop the stitch where it really should go? So we might just do that, I, you know, try to keep in sync with what we did, but I'm not going to for this one. Just pop it in that stitch, 
pull the tail back and crochet over your tail. All right, so it does actually, it's not actually in the slip stitch section. It's actually in the stitch. Someone did mention it to me recently and I thought it's not a big deal. And they said, yes, it is because that's the stitch. That's the slip stitch. Yeah, but anyway, that's neither here nor there. Chain one. I just thought I'd show you that. Uh, skip the one double crochet and do two or actually do your corner. Just call it a corner because you know in every corner in this um, piece now will be two double crochets, two chains. The only time you did three is in the first set here. Otherwise, it's two, two, two. That's how you remember it, yeah? One and two. All right, I'm not going to show you the rest with this one. I think you can do it. All you need to do is copy from that corner to that corner there. And then when you get here, go all the way across, get to your last two double crochets there, like so, and I will meet you there once you're done. Alrighty guys, here I am at the end of the row. Now what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you something, and I've done this before in other tutorials. This is where we have our stitch, yeah, we are stitch marker. Sometimes when I walk away from my work, I pop a stitch marker in my loop so if someone comes around and starts pulling at that thread your loop doesn't come undone all right that's just a little tip I thought I'd let you know the only reason I did that is because I did actually move away from the table for a while yeah all right so I'm going to take that stitch undone just for fun all right I ask you to get to your second last stitch or your last two stitches so skip one and we're into our last two stitches like normal yes and when you get here you are chaining one like normal skipping your stitch but You've already got a corner here, so what are we doing? We are just, and I've split the stitch. <laughs> Slip stitching into that split stitch, hello. <laughs> you can do this, Mary, you can do it. I have faith in you. Um, and slip stitch there, it's because my stitches are so tight, that's what it is. Don't do them tight, guys. Pull a loop through and pull it through to the loop on your hook. Now this is going to be different. We've got a pattern change now, complete pattern change, yeah? So from here we are chaining one, just give it a tug, yeah? And in the same stitch, it'll be fairly tight, pop your hook in and do a single crochet. So your hook goes in, pull the loop through, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two. Grab your stitch marker again, and once again, mine's tight. So yeah, I've split it, but don't worry, I'll deal with that at the end of the round or row, <laughs> whichever you want to call them. All right, so in that next stitch right there, you are popping a single crochet. And that's your two single crochets on this side. That'll be important when you get to the end of this round, yeah, or row. I say row or round because it goes in the round, but it's actually not round, it's square. So anyway, you can call it what you like. In the space, we are putting three double, I'm sorry, let's try three single crochets. But on the second one, we're putting stitch markers, all right? So first single crochet in that space. Second single crochet, grab a different colored stitch marker that I mentioned in the beginning of the tutorial, whether it's green, pink, yellow, orange, or oh, not pink because we're using pink right here. <laughs> it doesn't matter because you won't get confused, yeah? So do your third single crochet in that corner and that's what every corner will have. Three single crochets with a stitch marker on the second. Just move your work over so you can find that stitch right there. You're doing a single crochet in the stitch into your second stitch and guess what you're doing it over your space so you've got your third single crochet this is like your doubles from before yeah except you're doing them in singles fourth in the stitch fifth over the space sixth in the stitch seventh over the space eighth in the stitch ninth over the space, 10th into the stitch, 11th over the space, 12th in the stitch, nearly there, 13th over the space, 14th in your corner stitches, one, and 15th in that last one. So you have 15 single crochets along the way. And in that corner, what are we doing? 
three single crochets, we're putting a stitch marker on the second one. So one and two, grab that green stitch marker, like so. Ah, there you go. Do your third one. And then move it over and do your 15 across. One, two, and one in the space. Whoops, I'm out of frame, sorry there. One in the space is three, one in the stitch is four, and five in the space. Thirteen. Now we're on the corner stitches. Fourteen. And fifteen. So that is exactly what you're going to do. You're going to do fifteen across, three into the corner, and you're popping a stitch marker in the second stitch. Fifteen across, three into the corner, stitch marker in your second stitch. Fifteen across, same, and fifteen across, same. Once you get to this stitch marker right here, just a stitch right before it, complete it, and I will meet you there once you're done. Alrighty guys, here we are at the end of this round, very exciting, round, row, whatever you'd like to call it. I have two left, which is one there, and one in the space. All right, don't forget we had two single crochets here as well, all right? So if you haven't added up, that's normal. No, oh, split that stitch. Slip stitch into the split stitch. <laughs> oh, she's not doing well, guys. She really isn't today. All right, in that first, oh, that worked. Even without the split there, with the split, I should say. Pull the loop through and pull it through to the loop on your hook. You're not casting off. Don't cast off. Chain one. Single crochet in the same stitch like so and uh, uh, white is a little difficult to see guys I'm sorry about that but it does look nice on the piece yeah all right so you are popping a single crochet into your next stitch right there one into your next stitch right there all right now we're going to pop one in this stitch with our stitch marker, but what we're going to do is form a pico. Now if you're new to crochet, I'll show you two versions. One where more avid crocheter can do, and one if you're struggling, I'll show you that second one. But first we're going to do the little bit more complicated one. So in that stitch that you had your stitch marker in, you're going to do a normal single crochet. Do your single crochet like so. Let me pull some thread here. All right, and now you're going to chain three. One, two, and three. Now, if you've never done these picots before, what you're doing, there's many ways of doing it. This is my way. You're passing your hook through the top loop and through the side loop there. Not the whole stitch, just those two front, front and side loops, yeah? Pull a thread through, like so. Pull it through to the loop on your hook that's your pico in the same stitch you're going to do a single crochet like so all right now if you are struggling with that let me show you another version and this is for the new crochet all right so let's pretend like we didn't even do our first single crochet so you do your first single crochet you chain one two and three and then just do another single crochet in the same space it doesn't look like a proper pico, but it'll give you a little point. Yeah, personally, I don't like it. Okay, I'd rather do the normal pico. So if you want and you're new, have a bit of a practice at it. You've done your first single crochet. Now you're going to do your chain one, two, three. And the loops you're going into is that top loop and a side loop right there. Okay, pull the loop through like so and pull it through to the loop on your hook and then single crochet in the same stitch. All right, yes. So now what you're going to do is single crochet into the very next stitch, like so. And your next, actually now we'll start counting. That's one, two, three, four, five, 
सिक्स सेवन ओप्स सेवन ट्रिकी ये मिसिंग सम ऑफ द स्टिचेस गिव वन मोमेंट गाइस माय थ्रेड इज टगिंग हियर दैट वाज सेवन राइट एट शी सेज लाफिंग नाइन टेन इलेवन ट्वेल्व thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen and seventeen all right so you should have seventeen along there into that single crochet what are you doing take out your stitch marker you're doing a normal single crochet first like so let's get a little bit closer for this part Then you are chaining one, two, and three, and once again you're going into that top loop and the side loop of the stitch. Pull the loop through. Pull it through to the loop on your hook. You have performed that pico. Single crochet in the same space and single crochet across. How many? Seventeen. One. Sixteen and seventeen. All right. So each side has seventeen, and each corner has the one pico. So let's do that pico together for the last time. And you're thinking, what? Yes, the last time. <laughs> All right. So in the stitch with your stitch. Oh, it's way too close. All right. In the stitch with your stitch marker, you're doing a single crochet. Then you're chaining three, one, two, and three. Once again, you are sliding into the side of that stitch, sliding into the other one right there. Pull a loop through, pull it through to the loop on your hook, single in the same space, and then off you go doing your seventeen. All right. So now your job, guys, is to do just. That you're doing your seventeen across here, your pico in your corner, and across this way you're not doing seventeen because we already have. Hmm, how many do we have? One, two, and three here. So you're doing fourteen stitches across this way. All right. So go ahead and do this section right here. Get to your stitch marker, and I'll meet you there once you're done. Alrighty, guys. Here we are at the end of this side as well. Now, get excited now because I have a couple of stitches left, and you can actually see them. There's your stitch marker, and these are your two stitches that are left. All right. So single in that second last stitch, single in your last stitch. It might be a little bit tight, but it is definitely there. Be careful not to miss that one. Yeah. And then you are slip stitching. Did I split it? No, I didn't split this one. Yay. The final row, <laughs> I didn't split it. Hello. Okay, take out your stitch marker. You're slip stitching in there. Now there are numerous ways of doing this. You can slip stitch it through and have your knot there. There is another way of doing this, so you don't have a knot there. Take it undone. Take your last stitch undone. All right. And this is one that a lot of people use. I personally don't use it, but I'm going to show you anyway. You do your single crochet in your last stitch, pull your loop through, and then you cut it. So you haven't closed it up. You cut it first. Let's move everything out the way. Pull it through, just loosely. Pull it through. Grab your sewing needle or your darning weaving needle. Yeah, and you literally just. There are many ways, okay. Now I've done another way once before as well, and we're going to do another way. This is the stitch that had your stitch marker in it. We're not going to use that one. We're going to the stitch right before it with your needle, like that. Then you're coming back into 
these two loops of the stitch that you just made but didn't really complete so you're going through the back of the stitch like that oh, if I don't split it so much and pull it through like so yeah and then from here you're going to go straight back into that stitch you first went into give it a tug close it up real tight and your thread is at the back of your work and now all you need to do is make sure you weave this in really well because it's not knotted we didn't knot it all right so give it a tug yeah and then right at the back here somewhere you find some stitches to weave it in and I'm literally splitting through the back of stitches making sure you can't see the needle from the front yeah and just go through those back stitches one way I might do a few more yeah why not like so whoops I didn't check the front but it's okay <laughs> check the front guys and then you're going back in the same direction but just collect some threads from a different area don't go into the same space you are in here just find a different area over here somewhere and then go back in the other direction checking the front you can't see the needle no you can't now you could have done the old-fashioned way of making the knot and then just pulling it through I'm going to go uh, even further down because I'm a little bit paranoid yeah I'm going to go further down that way I'm really paranoid because it's the last thread the other ones will get hidden easy but this one here can actually come undone if you do not weave this in properly yeah because it's not knotted and I say that a lot it's not knotted try say that 10 times it's not knotted go do you all right so three times is plenty I might have done it four times but I can't remember anyway three times is plenty if you want to do it the fourth time like I did but there you go all the other threads you'll know how to do now just weave them all in except for thread number one you may notice the hole is starting to open and if you really put your finger in there that hole can open so a lot of people cut this thread and that's the end of it it's not if that opened with my finger right now imagine the washing machine so really give that work a tug grab your sewing needle I don't put my gear in the washing machine by the way guys that's just me being fussy but you can right from here you are going to literally go into where you've crocheted over you're going to literally pop your needle through it as well check that you can't see the needle from the front pull it through I think that's too high up I'm going to bring that down that's better I'm going to bring it down a little bit so you're going through some thread really tight it's really tight now that's good you want that because you don't want that to come undone so keep going through some sections that looks like I've overdone it a bit <laughs> it doesn't want to go through okay there yes now what I'm going to stop and go back in the same direction we came from but using different threads and mine's really thick so I don't think this is going to come undone but I still bless you by the way <laughs> my son in the background sneezing but I still want to make sure that is really done well I'm very very fussy with my ends um, and again, if you're not fussy with your ends, you don't need to be. I'm a little fluff here, it's driving me nuts. You know when you see something that just drives you nuts? <laughs> and there you go. You know what? That's plenty. Yeah? But make sure, no matter what your way of doing things is, make sure you weave that first end in. Because don't let anyone tell you that, that won't come undone in the wash. I will officially wash and block my square because I'm, you know, extraordinarily fussy. Now, I won't do a blocking tutorial here for it, uh, but if you wanted to see some blocking, I'll leave a link to the blocking playlist and you can just pick one. <laughs> pick one of the playlists, one of the videos on the playlists and do one of the blockings, yeah? In the meantime, I want to give a very special thank you, let's hide those, to the lovely Lynn who chose this colour combination, hide that one there, who chose this colour combination during our live antics. Now, if you wanted to be a part of choosing the next colour combination for our very next tutorial, you need to join us on Saturday mornings live at 10am, Melbourne, Australia time, that is.
and you get the chance as a subscriber to choose the color combination of our very next project. Once again, Lynn, thank you so much for your color choice and I will see everyone on our lives. Don't forget, we also have a live at Wednesday at 4 p.m. Melbourne, Australia time as well. Thank you so much for your color choice, Lynn, and I will see everyone on Saturday mornings live. Ah, ciao for now. Gorgeous little close-up. Oh, I use, get my favorite cup and put it on there and